Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching a clip from the Sideline Podcast. If you're interested in watching the full show, head over to Spotify and watch it there. Leave a five-star review. It would be very much appreciated. But for now, enjoy this little segment. Oh, 100%. I think it's really important as well at the moment. Obviously, there's a big, um, and, and thankfully, there's a big push at the minute on, on mental health, men's mental health, everybody's mental health. But the whole Deli Ali situation, obviously, mm-hmm. he was a rising star. That he had three incredible years representing England. Um, and I know this is something Kieran, Kieran will be keen to talk about being an Everton fan, but um, yeah. he was so brave to come out and actually say it to the people who were writing him off and, and maybe not knowing what was going on. He's been brave enough to come out and say, look, this is what happened when I was younger. This this sticks with me. This is some emotional baggage. You know, to have the bravery to do that, that's an incredible thing where people will listen to that and think, you know what, it's okay to go through ups and downs. Um, and to be fair, what Deli Ali's done I hope, I hope changes the game. I hope more young athletes, but don't have to come out and say it. They're more than, again, but I hope the change of the game in terms of the media and the press, yeah. just backing off a little bit and saying, look, we don't really know what's going on here. Um, yes, we're, we're paid the right opinions and we're paid the, but, you know, what Deli Ali's been through and the fact he's still playing professional football is just an incredible achievement in itself. Yeah. Um, so I haven't listened to his report, but thank you for sort of, I mean, I heard bits of it, so thanks for filling it in. Yeah. But I think that general gist of, to, to me, it's like if you've got nothing positive to say, then just shut your mouth. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and what I mean by that as well is, okay, you might have something to critique, <laughs> and might not be happy with how he's playing, but instead of just shouting from the sideline with zero clue about how to do it. Um, just give the guy a bit, a bit of a benefit of the doubt, whoever that person is, Deli Ali or whoever's out there you're watching. Yeah. Um, and 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 just have a, have more of an approach of, I wonder what's going on for him or her mm-hmm. or them. And, and and basically try and make sure that, you know, you, you give something as a positive side to them playing better for your team. Because ultimately that's what it is. It's, it's usually yeah. that way, isn't it? It's usually yeah. for your own for your own sort of athlete that you're cheering mm. on your team yeah. that a lot of this abuse comes from okay it, it kind it, of it, 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 from the opposition fans but you know yeah it's almost like we forgot how to be supporters though like the clue is in the name if you are a supporter of somebody or, or you are part of somebody's support group you are not there to to drag them down you are there to support them when they're not at the best and i feel like that has been forgotten about um again we can we could spend all day going into reasons why in terms of social media and, and making it so much easier for people to hide behind phones or keyboards and have to see it face to face so um yeah it's just it's just incredible there what you were saying about Radicano. i thought i just wanted to kind of touch on the, the deli Ali thing well the, um, spe- speaking about media it's social media and obviously media coverage has had many positives negatives through sport individuals you've seen players grow so incredibly well due to social media you've had sports rise would you say that social media has been more of well and media coverage had more of a positive spin and a more positive outgoing when it comes to sport or would you say it's been a little bit of a step backwards in terms of sports players individuals themselves as in sport in general or for the players sorry kieran just to call it make sure so, so a bit of both obviously there's sports that have had a massive boost in coverage now that tv is starting to show them a lot more i know women's football yeah. Yeah. which has been deserved for many years is now starting yeah. to get the coverage it deserves so yeah. it, it it has had that positive spin in terms of sports itself yeah. but for individuals would you right. say it's been more of a negative than a positive for them i, I think there's I think there's a bit of everything mixed into that because one of the reasons it's successful is because of the narrative of the team, but also the narrative of individuals within the team. So yeah. from that side of things, you you know, if you know a person better, yeah, people make decisions on how they feel about something. So if you hear an, a story about a Deli Ali or a Radicanu or a um, Bro- Lucy Bronze or something, you kind yeah. of you, you you kind of connect with that. So that's where it definitely you're absolutely right. I think it's had a massively positive side of things to sport, uh, and that's brilliant. Um, bit what we touched upon earlier, we've got to understand that with it comes the downsides. Yeah, and and the fact of life is is that, unfortunately, society, and whether it's in sport, politics, but especially politics at the moment, who are dominating our news headlines <laughs> at the moment, whether it's Trump on one side of the Atlantic, or Brexit over here. Yeah, uh, and Mister, you know who it, it is a case of it becomes very polarized. 
and it's a sense of um, because of this, whoever shouts the loudest tends to be on the extreme. And as a result of that, because more voices have heard from those extremes, society almost feels like that's where we're going. Whereas like to think we have these conversations, if you speak one-on-one -on -one with most people, they're, they're not as extreme as, as it's being made out to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But the unfortunate thing is because a mouthpiece is given to uh, people to do that, uh, it, it just seems like the only way for the popular vote to go for a politician or the um, what teams in sport have to do or the people that run sport feel they have to do because the loudest voices they're hearing are the extremes say mm -hmm. we need to take sport in that direction or we need to take politics in that direction. So to win a vote, uh, <laughs> we've got to shout louder about uh, hating an immigrant or, or yeah. hating, um, you know, someone who's got a lot of money in a bank account or somebody who's um, trying to get a little bit more on their social welfare, mm -hmm. you know, it's all about hate, hate, hate this. They've got something I don't have. Uh, and um, instead of can we find a common ground and, and spend our time in a discourse there, that's yeah. what's, you know, so I, I love those little words you use about support and supporters. How can we not be a little bit more? And why, do, why? And I'd like to think some clubs have gone this way. I think Brentford have done this um, in, a, in a great way, for example. I'm not sure about some of the other clubs, but... Yeah. You know, the Liverpools, the Newcastles of the world, and, and I should say Everton as well. Karen, but <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> some of the big teams who have got a real connection with their local community fan base and understand that and understand that they need to tap into that. And the way to do that is to find common ground and to find yes. to, how do I speak to my fans? Uh, and, and what I love, you, you introduced about the women's football, women's sport, is I think they're doing a remarkable job because yeah. they don't have all that baggage that men's sport has. And what I love about it is you've got – hopefully it stays a long time. You've got players – I much prefer in a lot of ways watching women's sport because you don't have the – sorry, it's, I know it's football, but you don't have That's the writhing good. around going off the pitch. You, oh, don't have the, you don't have them 100 of them in the face of the referee uh, beating on that. They, 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 um, and – you know, you, you you basically have a, a kind of a throwback to how sport should be played. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have a throwback as a result of a whole new fan base being attracted to watch sport. Yeah. You would never go, and, and dare I say it, even go to St. James's. No, no interest okay. in going to St. James's, no interest in going to uh, Goodison Park or Anfield or whatever. But they'd rock up to... Uh, them when they've got a, their women's team playing, yeah. uh, et cetera, et cetera. Or, or as did go down to the Euros uh, to watch them playing last year and obviously good luck for the, world, the, the, uh -huh. the knockouts in the next few weeks.